Hello YouTube, I'm Pilot Stud. Welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking an informal look at the Aerosoft Twin Otter. Now this is not a proper review. There may be one of them on my channel later. But the video market there is already pretty saturated with YouTubers that had the ability to take a look at this aircraft before release. Now I have paid the full £30 for this aircraft. So in today's video, I'll be giving you my first impressions. We took a flight from... Lands End Airport in the United Kingdom to St Mary's Airport on the Isles of Scilly, about 20 miles to the west. It's a beautiful flight and is flown or has been flown by the Twin Otter in real life, by the airline called Skybus. Now sadly we haven't got that livery in the video today, we have substituted it with Solomon Airlines. But nonetheless, it's a pretty realistic route. Now you won't be seeing it all today because that would be a long video. It's basically just takeoff landing and a bit in between. I do hope you enjoy and of course I share my thoughts at the end. Before you do anything, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. But now we're going to hop onto the ground at Land's End Airport. Now I don't do everything properly and you can understand why. It's my first time flying it and my landing at the end is horrific. I'm pretty embarrassed with it. Even after two attempts to go around, it still wasn't perfect. In my defence, it's a windy day and it's a small runway in an aircraft. I've never flown before but nonetheless, I do think this is a really fun aircraft and off the bat, I would recommend it. It's not perfect and there are imperfections. I do go into that, but now let's swap over to the ground. So welcome to Land's End Airport. We're getting started up now uh, quite informally, although I am going off the checklist. But you know, me not being familiar with the cockpit does mean I miss things out, as you'll see later in the video. Nonetheless, enjoy watching me fan at flying a plane. We did get there eventually and you know it was a substandard flight, not my usual standard, not something I'd be doing in the A320 but a lot of fun nonetheless. Okay, so here we are at the runway in the beautiful Twin Otter. First time flying it, um, you know, I would say it starts up really well, feels very realistic. Um, all the gauges, especially all the oil and pressure gauges, work exactly like how I imagine they would work in this kind of aircraft to maybe a better degree, well definitely to a better degree than most, if not all, of the Microsoft Flight Sim aircraft. Only thing I would say that stuck out to me so far is that there's a few kind of visual bugs, you may notice a bit of flickering in terms of shadows and indeed once you do look, we'll just uh, break here with our pedal brakes, you can see around here it does look a bit funky, we've got some weird kind of, um, I don't really know how to describe it, but shadows kind of breaking up and I don't think that's just my PC. On the whole I'd say the cockpit is pretty well done but of course there's a few indiscrepancies, um, not as high definition as I'd like in some places and then perfectly flying in others. So yes, you can get the Twin Otter for £30, we'll talk about pricing while we're coming along today, and that includes a bunch of variants, from the Ski variant um, to a Tundra variant, which is basically with big wheels. There's plenty of variants there, I've put a list of them on the screen now, and while I'm only showing you the most common one in today's video, which is the passenger variant. There's plenty of exciting ones, especially the skydiving one. I recently went skydiving. What an experience. So it's nice to see that for £30, you are getting a great collection um, of this aircraft. Now, we're not going to be doing anything, everything 100% perfectly today. This is my first flight, so I probably am messing stuff, stuff up, just like that turning circle. I think I need a bit more power now. And uh, I haven't even looked at the lights up here, which are probably telling me we've got our left generator on. Right, okay, there we go, that'll do us. <laughs> Goodness me. Uh, right, yeah, I haven't even looked at those lights, as I was saying, so I don't even know if I've done everything 100% right. I did try and follow the checklist as much as possible, but I do notice we've got a pneumatic low pressure there, and also something to do with a uh, fuel pump boost, uh, which I believe is down here, so let's maybe turn that off. Will that do it? Okay, let's got rid of most of our warnings, and we've still got left generator on. 
and I can kind of hear it in the background, I believe. Uh, let's see how I can sort that one out. Okay, so I found the issue. Funnily enough, apparently I forgot to turn on the left generator. Right generator is fine. Uh, don't know how I did that. Don't know how I missed that. We're still getting pneumatic low pressure there. Um, but maybe that will go away as we go along. Or maybe I'm about to cause a catastrophic um, air, air crash. But I don't know. Let's get up in the sky now. There we go, got to start in now, so we'll start to say uh, that's from breaks off, although we're lying a bit there. Let's go over to the beautiful Isles of Scilly. Okay, so I really like the rudder control on this, not too sensitive and um, that you're flying all over the place, but sensitive enough to feel it. There we go, we've got full power now, coming off a bit, but we'll sort that out, just listen to those sounds. Beautiful. There we go, up in the sky, not the best takeoff, but for my first takeoff ever in the Twin Otter, I'll take it. For my first thoughts, you know, this is a really good aircraft. Sounds are very good, so much so that I've actually had to turn them down while I'm talking to you because they are very loud. You know, we've got our GPS in there, which has been um, customised, it's not just drawn from the default Microsoft Flight Sim. We've got autopilot around here, you can see it there. We've got a collection of steam gauges, which I always love. And a really beautiful aircraft, you know, I I can't see any massive fault with it at the moment. We're flying over Cornwall at the moment, a beautiful part of the country. Sounds are great, you know, everything is just very nice with it. And to start off, I'd say yes, it's very much worth it. No, I'm not a perfect pilot flying it. Frankly, I haven't had the experience. I'm literally, I mean, I've been flying for 1 minute 30 seconds and that's it. This really is my first impressions. I've already had a bit of a look at the outside obviously and you know I think that is really beautiful. Probably one of the main selling points, the external model is very good. Closely followed by sounds, I'd say the sounds are also very good. And the fact that everything just works. It's not too heavy to fly, it's not too intensive, you know. You can just sit back and relax with this bad boy. Of course it's got the slightly unconventional throttle being at the top there, but bearing in mind this aircraft was first developed, or first flew in 1955, um, although a few variants ago, I think we can give it a bit of slack. Now you can already see our destination coming into view, so it's not going to be long before we can land. Um, I guess I'll see you over there. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a, a nice relaxing flight over there, getting a feel for the aircraft, and I'll let you know my observations as we go along. Now something is quite clear to me, looking around the cockpit, textures frankly aren't as high resolution as I'd like them to be in some places. They look a bit pixelated in areas, um, and fine in others. I think that's a main issue with me. Also something I've noticed uh, while I'm zooming around the cockpit as well, quite trying to look around, is uh, when you change uh, your throttle, um, engine noises, sometimes they sound very airy. They sound, if you go outside, you kind of heard it there, they don't sound very well mixed. And there's a very little kind of variation between full throttle and then let's say 70% throttle. But then pull it back down past 50%, it's a very very sharp cut off. Of course I imagine you hear it when we will begin our descent in a minute, but yes, not the best thing. I'm taking a look at autopilot now, I believe, uh, I'm almost certain that's the standard autopilot, uh, which you know, it, it, it is how it is. Uh, Microsoft Flight like Sims autopilot is pretty good and um, when it works, but it is quite temperamental. Anyway, I'll see it on the ground. It's a pretty nice aircraft, it looks very good, um, but there are shortcomings, and I hope these shortcomings are fixed in the future. Okay, so a bit of an update uh, from the flight deck, seeing as we've got the silly oils right in front of us now. What do I see? Well, I see a very well modelled aircraft uh, with a few flaws. Some switches are inoperative, not all, but some nonetheless, so paying £30 for that might push people away. Also, some systems are not... Uh, Aerosoft made their Microsoft Flight Sim standard, but as you can see, it looks beautiful from the outside. So as I said, modelling is really well done. Texturing is a bit on the not poor side. I'd just call it not payware level in some areas. 
feels quite old looking here, just looking close to it, especially with all the T's and P gauges. But yeah, you know, part of that doesn't look right to me. Hopefully they'll fix it in the future. Flight model wise, superb. Uh, I can't notice anything different. Of course, I'm not used to flying this aircraft in real life, so I might be completely wrong. Um, so I'd like one of you guys to let me know on how it feels in the description, or in the comments I should say. At the moment I'm probably looking 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, I would recommend it, um, but I'd advise you to look into it before making that investment. Now welcome to the Isles of Scilly just down there I believe, um, we've got St Mary's Airport, I think it's that island, um, it'll pop into view any minute now, yeah I'm pretty sure it's that island because I can see the boat and the side, and just a look at this, absolutely beautiful. I haven't even taken a look at the GPS yet. Of course, we've got all the standard stuff down here, like, uh, you know, your transponder, so I should have set that. Um, but when I reset my aircraft, the cryo troubleshoot, the autopilot system, um, it did alert enough to come to. I mean, you can keep it out in way or on, so it's actually got some function. We've got our autopilot panel down there. As you can see, we click autopilot, autopilot takes over, you have minimal effect. Um, and of course we've got our flight director on the artificial horizon there, turn that off. Right, now the great thing about this aircraft is that it's so, so rugged, you can basically take it anywhere. You know, the little islands of the Caribbean to international airports, this aircraft can suit anywhere. And with all the variants, from the skiing variant to the parachute variant to the uh, well, water ski variant, there's really no excuse not to take this flying, because you can just put it anywhere. It's such a rugged aircraft. Okay, the airport is just popped into the site now. We are way off, so um, we are going to have to do a bit of a tight manoeuvre around, but you know, we'll sort it out. The one thing I did notice with sound is that there's kind of levels. You know, you put it full throttle, and it's very loud. You move it back one, and it quiets down almost quickly. You see, you kind of hear it there. Maybe it's like that in the real aircraft, but it does feel quite blocky. Maybe that's just me being stupid. We are coming in very fast. I think we've got to go for a touch and go first. Enter the circuit. <laughs> we are very quick. Yeah, don't fly like this, guys. As I said, this is my first impressions, so things will inevitably go wrong. I'm basically taking all the skills I've picked up in me flying my Cessna constantly and moving it over to a much bigger, much heftier aircraft. So inevitably, it's not going to go all to plan. 500? Yeah, way too high on the pappy. But nonetheless, welcome to beautiful oh, I was silly, St Mary's Airport. Right, let's see how it does it here. We... Bit of wind coming in, bit of wind, a lot of wind. Yeah, we're going to go around. <laughs> oh dear. Well, of course, we try that again. We have got a bit of a longer runway there. Uh, which I did know existed just in my mind that it did, so we'll be using that. This would honestly be perfect for the Caribbean, I can just see it there. Very sharp turn now. Right, we're going to climb a bit more. And we'll use a bit of trim now, I haven't used that too much. Oh, very nice trim, yep. That is a great trim there, very responsive. My hand is off the stick now and I'm putting very minimal impact in. Impact input in. There we go. That is good trim. Very good on the honeycomb yoke and every single button seems to work very well as well. And also our pneumatic, uh, pneumatic pressure warning thing up here has gone off as well so that's always a good sign. Right, we'll turn back now. We are very nicely trimmed. I'm very impressed with that. That feels great. Very happy with that. You know, nose down a bit. But not too much. Screaming at me, saying something. It feels quite heavy in this, uh, so I'm going to trim up just a bit, just to help me out here. We have got a bit of wind today, quite a gusty day. I can tell you the wind speed because it's on live weather, but you can see by the sea, it's not quiet. I'm going to put a bit more power in because we're quite low. We need a lot of left rather than rather by the looks of it. You know, I'm putting quite a bit in already now just to straighten us up. 
I don't reckon it's going to be a good landing. Um, but who knows, I might surprise myself. Of course, we haven't actually got any flaps down yet because we're not nowhere near the white arc. Um, so I've left that for that. We can get our landing lights on now. There we go. See at the top there, they pop on. Okay, we're getting four whites in the pappy, so, uh, you know, we can lower them down just a bit. I'd love to fly this route in real life, and in my upcoming trip report series around the UK, I imagine um, this will be one of them, because it's one of the more unique flights. We're still not getting round there, we're still not getting in, so we do need a bit more power. Slightly low on the pappies, but, you know, more even than we were. Now too high. It's very windy for me in this aircraft for the first time. I don't really want to put that left rudder in just yet. There we go, now coming in with it. Okay, a bit more, otherwise we'll smash into that cliff face. We only got two puppies there, okay, you know, no, that'd look weird. But there we go, beautiful. That'll do us. Stick to it. Come on, come on. Right, flaps. Flaps coming down. Oh dear. Right, decent speed, decent speed. Continue. Oh. Oh dear. <laughs> try that again, folks. Let's try that again. You guys didn't see that. Okay, so welcome back. Got very close to stall speed there. Just timing at my approach just to see how long it gives me. Very much uh, forgot I was in a twin offset and kind of went Cessna 152 mode there, I've got to be honest. It's not the easiest aircraft to fly, but you know, that was my, well, I guess it was my second attempt at landing. Yeah, but too, but too, come on. Come on. Right, there we go. Let's just get over that cliff face. Ah. Ah. There we go. It's very windy, and I, you know, welcome to the Isles of Silly. First landing in the Twin Otter, could have been worse. Um, it's a rather windy day and short runway in an aircraft I've never flown before. So you guys have got to give me that. Let's get landing lights. Uh, we'll keep them on until we're off the runway. So welcome to the Isles of Silly. Uh, how does it feel? I loved every second of that, I can't lie. Aerosoft have done something really special here. First impressions. I'd recommend it. Now what you've got to remember with this first impressions as we taxi in is that this is really only one thirteenth of what you're getting. You're getting, um, I believe it is 13 other types of aircraft in the package. Some of them more similar than others, but some of them are very different. For example, you've got the one uh, used by the British Antarctic Surger uh, Surgery um, Survey Team, which is, of course, with skis. You've got the Tundra variant with bigger tyres, the float plane, which we haven't even looked at yet. And this, as a passenger variant, looks beautiful and does a very good job. Now, would I recommend it? Well, with this aircraft, I think it falls down to personal preference. It's good, but it's not mind-blowing. It's got good features, some really awesome features, um, such as the beautiful control lock, which I love. Just look at that, that's awesome. But does that make me well, think it's worth it for £30? Personally, I do, but I can understand why people have got a problem with it. It's by no means perfect. Nonetheless, I think it's pretty good. I give it a rating of 7 out of 10. Sound issues and indeed texture issues should probably be worked on. But as with uh, shutting down here, just reading the checklist at the moment, I don't think you can see up the screen. Um, I'd like to wish you all a great day. The link to this product is in the description. From me today, that is all. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. Thank you to my first class channel members. They get a shout out on the screen now. We haven't even looked too in depth into these um, instruments here, such as the GPS and of course the standard transponder and autopilot panel down there, but that will be coming in a later video. Let's get shut down now. I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.